Hello everyone, Colin Canet here for Woodwork Web. Today we've got another coffee project and for those of you that are familiar with the little Keurig coffee pods, today we're going to be making a stand, a six-sided stand that you can put your coffee pods in. This will hold 30 of them. We're going to use Purple Heart on the corner so we're going to show you how to use that and We've got a little treat for you. If you can figure out what that is, you'll see later on what we use this for. So join us for making this little Keurig coffee holder. So to keep this project moving along, I've cut my pieces here, the inner pieces, and I've also cut the side pieces. And they're just they're three eighths of an inch thick and two and a quarter inches wide by thirteen inches long. And it's not imperative that uh, those dimensions because you can work with whatever you've got. What I'm going to do now is just quickly go ahead and glue the ends or the sides on here just to give a little bit different contrast and that's why I wanted to take a minute to show you how I'm going to do that. Now because there's a, a few of these and I don't have enough clamps to do everything, what I'm going to do is use tape. And that's why I wanted to show you, you know, when you're gluing things up, it doesn't have to be cranked up real hard. It only has to touch the glue uh, with a, a little bit of effort, and that's enough to glue your two parts together. You you really don't have to crank real hard on clamps that you're when you're gluing things. And I learned this from a luthier from Florida. He makes guitars down there to use his uh, uses his pinky finger and when you do that you have your other hands free. And I thought that was a pretty innovative idea so I adopted it pretty quickly. Okay, now those will go together just like that. And it's good to move those back and forth just to make sure all of the glue touches. And now, what I'm going to do, instead of using clamps, I'm just going to run that to the end of the table. I'll we'll show you that. I like to start off just over the edge. And all we need to do is that, pinch those together like that. And you can actually feel with your fingers right through the tape that that is together and in a couple of hours or so that will all be nicely glued together. Just put a few of those along, put a little bit of pressure on that. Here's the drill bit that we're going to be using and in fact these are called hole saws because of the, the way they drill holes with these little jagged edges but, but in fact they're, they're really a, a drill bit. The jig we're going to make is pretty simple. I just have some a few pieces of scrap wood here. This is I think an old 2x4 and some 1x4 uh, and a little piece for the edge. The reason we're making the jig is because we're going to be drilling down into the wood and we don't want the bit to catch and spin things so we're going to make a little jig to hold everything nice and firm and all I'm going to do with this is flip this over like this and we'll just drive some screws into the end of this wood where the drill bit will not be going in. And we'll just fasten that down. 
This is going to be a pretty simple rudimentary jig, but it'll work pretty good. This piece here is going to be for the side, and I'm going to put a couple of pan head screws here. And Now all the screws are well away from the center, so I don't have to worry about my hole cutter cutting um, into the uh, screws. And when we mount this on the drill, what will happen is the drill will spin around, but it won't allow this because we'll clamp this down and it won't allow, so it's kind of a little temporary fence that we'll put on there and we can just slide this back and forth for each one of the holes that we need to drill. Well, the glue's dry now. We've let that sit for uh, three or four hours. And all we need to do now, if I can get hold of it, is to just peel that tape off. And you'll find that that wood is on there very securely. Okay, I've moved along to the drill press and there's the jig that we made and you can see how this is going to slide nicely along there. What I need to do now is to line up with one of these holes exactly in the middle the existing bit and then I can clamp that down. So there's the two clamps and there's our jig and all I need to do now is put each one of the pieces of wood in, each one of the sides, and just bring it right down and drill out the hole. But of course I'll have to pull out the plug each time. So, let's get started. Now I'm not going to show you drilling each hole because I have to stop, pull the plug out each time, but you'll get an idea what it's, how it's going to work. Well, we've gone through all of our little sides here and made our holes in all of the wood. And, you know, this really isn't the best bit for that. It's the only thing that I could find that was 1 and 5 eighths, and the 1 and 5 eighths was important. Uh, a Forstner bit would do a much better, quicker job, neater job, uh, but that's all that I could find in this size uh, in my area. So uh, you do what you have to do. What I did find, taking the, all of these plugs out, uh, the easiest thing was what the manufacturer provided for was these little slots on the side and then you just give a couple of little taps in there and they came out so my effort of drilling the holes it kind of worked for some of them but not for all of them so it was a bit tedious but that's done. Next thing I need to do now is we're going to go over to the sliding miter and we're just going to trim off the ends of these. Well, there's all our sides, all six of them, and they're, of course, the holes. We've drilled the holes, and I've sanded them now. Next thing I need to do is cut the angles on the sides of these so they all go together. And now it's time for a quiz. How many people know what that thing is? Well, it's an angle finder for the table saw. Let's go over to the table saw, and we'll show you how it works. If you look at these little circles, and I'll turn it so you can see, they're a little hard to read, but there's a number in each one of these little holes, or these little circles. And what they refer to is, there's a six in this one, and all that refers to is that if you use this angle, this will give you a hexagon or a six-sided um, figure. 
here's a five, and if you use this angle, this will give you a five-sided figure. There's a four here. So there's the blade at 90 degrees, and I'm just going to crank it over now. The blade will just clip just the very tip of that, and then I'll be able to turn it around and cut the other side as well. So I'm just going to line that up here. After I make the first cut, I'll be turning it around to make the second angle cut. That's what that angle cut looks like. I'm just going to go ahead now and cut all the rest of them exactly the same way. Okay, let's have a look at these. Okay, now there they are, and they're all going to come together like that. But I don't have a, a strap. There's sometimes a strap you can get to glue these together. Um, but let me show you a really cool trick that I learned a few years ago. So I don't swap too much glue on my workbench. Okay. So, really cool trick. We're just going to line up this board at the bottom here. It's just to line up one end so that we get them all the same. And I'm going to put just a little piece of tape so they're nice and tight. Each one of them. Now, what we do is just this. Take that tape and run that all the way across there, like that. And we'll do the same thing further down. Uh, we can do it right there. could even do another one in the middle if you wanted, but watch this. You flip that over, and when we put glue in here, check this out. Look at that. Those just come together and hold that really tight so it's a perfect gluing surface. But, this is stuck here. What we're going to do right now is I'm going to glue this up. So we'll show you that, we'll speed through that, and then we will roll them together. But that's just a little, um, just a little brush, disposable brush. Okay, now we'll take these and roll them up. Now that they're all glued. What the... I don't want the tape to get caught in there. I think, just tear that one off. There we go. There we are. There's our column, our six-sided column, and it's nicely, I just looked at the joints, you can see them yourself, the joints are all nice and tight, and all we need to do now is just let this sit for a few hours, and then we'll be able to carry on. Well, there's our uh, coffee stand, our all dry, let's uh, quickly take off all of the tape here. Well, my sanding's all done, so this is all ready to go, but before we do the finishing, I, I just thought of something. We need to, we should have some kind of a stand to put this on, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an insert that will fit in here, and then on this I'm just going to draw a circle, we'll cut that out on the bandsaw, and then we'll just sand up the sides and make it look nice, 
and then we'll put this insert on top of this base so that we can fasten it all down. So what I'm going to do right now is just make some marks in here so I can cut this out on the bandsaw. I'm all ready to go with the bandsaw and believe it or not, bandsaws are one of the dustiest tools in the workshop. So I've got my dust collector set up and the first one I'm going to cut is the hexagon, the small hexagon insert. for that. So let's go ahead now and do some finishing on this product uh, and I love this stuff. Uh, the only thing you have to, to know about Seikos is, uh, or Osmo is you put on very very light coats and I'll put on three coats of this eventually. Well, we've made some good progress. Uh, our finish is dry. I went ahead, I was going to leave the top open, but I've decided that I didn't like the look of it. So I went ahead off camera and I just made this little top and I've uh, mounted some wood in there and just glued the sides of it. And you can see that there's a split in there so that if there's any wood expansion, uh, it won't bust our uh, sides apart. So that just needs to get glued on the top. We've got our centerpiece here. I'm just going to put some glue on the sides and on the bottom and we'll put that together like that, let that set for a while and we'll be all ready to go. And now, and I put some uh, little pods in here just so you can see. And you know, they actually hold in there quite well. If you shake it or move it hard, the odd one will fall out. But generally speaking, they hold in there quite good. And this will hold, I think this was because it's six sided and five aside, it'll hold 30 different pods. You can mix or match them, uh, whatever works for you. And it's all put together nicely. If you wanted, you could put a, a little um, bearing turntable underneath it so it would spin a little bit easier. But it actually spins pretty good now. Uh, you could even put felt feet on it. That would help it to spin a little bit better too. So it looks really nice with the uh, Purple Heart uh, corners on there and uh, just an attractive easy to make fun weekend little project don't forget if you haven't subscribed to us we ask you to do that we ask you to follow us on Twitter like us on Facebook and we're going to be putting a lot more things on Facebook in the upcoming months so you'll uh, if you're not a Facebook fan you'll want to uh, sign up for that I'm Colin Canette for Woodwork Web thanks for watching